Chiron is so much more than the wounded healer, the greatest spiritual gift you have to give. Now you know you cannot heal this wound, but you can care for it. These people have got to find the courage to find their passion again, and then share that very passion with the world. And let's lean into what you can do. This is going to be such an important video for you to watch if you're trying to understand your astrological natal chart, your karmic contract in this lifetime, your wounds, and how to manage and deal with those wounds. Also, I want you to know that Chiron actually ultimately is a gift. Now, how can these wounds be a gift? Well, I'm going to break it all down for you today. I hope that this video gives you a little something to help you transform your life. Chiron is so much more than the wounded healer. If you haven't seen my video on what does Chiron mean in the astrology chart, oh, please, dear God, <laughs> tell me that you have already seen that. I'm assuming if you're here, you've already been there. And if not, you absolutely have got to go watch that video so you can even understand what Chiron is and how to manage it, navigate it, deal with it, and ultimately not heal it. Yeah, you heard me right. Not heal it. This is the wound inside of you that cannot be healed. Don't lose faith. Just watch that other video. It's really important. Also, I want to tell you that there's going to be a new format to my videos. So I will be doing a briefer version now. Don't worry, it's still going to be really long and really juicy. But for all of my members, my super supporters and my superstar super supporters, I love you so much. I'm going to do this same video with extended content for each of the houses for you. So make sure on my members only playlist, you watch this video so you can get all my richer, deeper, even more transparent. You can get the gold out of my video with all my extended content. And if you are not a member, you're not a super supporter or superstar super supporter, you can join. It puts about six to 10 cents in my pocket a day, and it allows me to do videos like this. Come join this absolutely beautiful community, and you can see all my behind the scenes videos, and from now on, all my extended content on my Sunday videos. So as I mentioned before, Chiron is the great human paradox. It is the human condition we have all experienced, where being born is also life-threatening, right? So your very birth is, in a way, a death in itself, because you are leaving that safety and that security of the womb, and you are entering a very dangerous space. It's so dangerous, you cannot survive on your own. So when we are born, we have an immediate separation, literally with the umbilical cord, and then we feel separate from that cosmic, divine, safe and secure place that we were in within the womb. We are not necessarily born wounded, but we are oftentimes, not always, but oftentimes born into a wounded family that doesn't always deserve us. Was that you? Sometimes we are born into a wounded environment that has experienced generations of sadness was that you? And sometimes we are born into a wounded world that is toxic around us and not healthy enough for our innocent, sweet souls. Is that you? Just remember where there is suffering in your life, there is also not a big, not a lot, but a gargantuan opportunity for healing. And where there is sadness in your life, spirit is asking you to become wise. Sadness can create, it has the ability to create wisdom. And Chiron holds deep wisdom inside of it. You have to tap the well, but it's in there. If you can get beyond your anger. Chiron is a karmic sensitivity that is inherited across all our numerous lifetimes. And so it can become our deepest spiritual wound. 
And it's just like how the Chironic myth shows us it is an immortal wound that can never heal in the way in which we wish it to. It stays open and it creates vulnerability. It creates vulnerability in numerous ways. It creates insecurity. It makes us feel unsafe. It makes us feel overexposed. It makes us feel tender. It makes us feel fragile. It makes us feel like we are unsure of ourselves. And hopefully the pain keeps your heart open. Hopefully it doesn't shut you down and harden you so much that you can't work with it. Now, this is why I want you to watch my previous video on what does Chiron mean in the natal chart. The healer in you grows out of the wounded place inside of you. You cannot heal if you do not have a wound in the first place to heal. And you cannot glean the wisdom of having healed that wound if there is no wound. Your wounds become gifts if you wish them to do so. Let me continue because I'm not going to go into the mythology. I might do that again in another video because I do want to get to the houses. And the houses are absolutely critical in understanding where your Chiron wound is and what it's trying to create in your life. Chiron by sign is important, but it takes 50 years to go through all of the signs. Chiron is a generational planet, if you will. It's a comet. Uh, downgraded to a small planet. Um, it's a comet planet. So some people say asteroid, but now it's a planet comet. Chiron is generational, let's say that. So everybody who you went to high school with has the same sign in Chiron. But where it makes a unique story and footprint for you is by house, and that's what we're going to do today, by aspect, by aspect to all your other planets, by transit, and by your progressions in aspect to Chiron. Chiron doesn't move very much by progression. Your progress chart will interact with your natal Chiron. And that is really important because that creates triggers. And I also want to say by ruler so or dispositor. So what I want you to do, my advanced learners and thinkers, I want you to start to understand your aspects and what is the ruler and what is the ruler doing in your chart. Now, if that's too advanced for you and you have no idea what I'm saying, don't worry. We're going to do the real basics and we're going to go through all 12 houses. But I want you to tr understand true astrology. And I want you to know that you cannot know your wound quickly on one of these, you know, YouTube videos that are like, oh, if you have Chiron and Pisces, it means this. Uh, no, you have to know the ruler. What is the ruler doing in your chart? Is the ruler of Chiron on your ascendant? That's a different makeup. That's a whole different ball game. And what is it doing by aspect? And what house is it in? Because the house is going to show us the subject matter in which this Chiron wound is festering. I want to tell you something else. I am going to do all of that, every single bit of that in my next Seattle workshop and retreat. That is going to be on May 16th through the 19th, right here in gorgeous, gorgeous waterfront Seattle. So if you want to get a ticket for that, they're going to go on sale on October 31st, Halloween. I thought it would be a great day to put the tickets on sale. There will be payment plans. So you can just pay a little bit as you go. I only have room for 40 people. Now, I think this is going to sell out and sell out pretty quickly. I've had more than 100 people tell me that they want to come. But let me tell you something. I'm not ready to teach to 100 people yet because I'll just tell you why. And this is my Mercury in Scorpio. I like intimacy. I like deep transformation, and that's what this workshop is. It is not just a classroom style, oh, come and take some notes. No, it is a transformational retreat and workshop, and we are going to spend a full day on Chiron and understanding how to play with it by dispositor, rulership, aspect, progressions, transits, right? Get ready. It's going to be deep. So if you want to come, please, please go to my shop tab. The link is below, and just mark on your calendar October 31st. Tickets go on sale and it is going to be wonderful. So the first 40 people, I'm really excited to see who you will be and I absolutely cannot wait. Okay. The placement of Chiron by sign, of course, and mostly by house and aspect, but today by house in your natal chart will indicate the area, the subject matter, where 
you have this chironic wound. Now, chiron wounds are sometimes harder to see. They're not necessarily harder to feel, but they're harder to see. You cannot see my chironic wound. You might be able to see my Pluto wound, but you cannot see my chironic wound. The house will also show us how you go about healing this wound. So it shows us not only where the wound is going to show up, it shows us your approach to what you need to heal. Now, listen, if you are a parent, it is so important that you understand your child's chironic wound. It's really, really important because it's also the medicine that they need in order to heal that very wound. So my daughter has her Chiron in the fourth house of home, of family. And so I know there will be a story in her life, a story in her family life that will be painful and that will hurt her. But I also know she needs her family to heal that very wound as well. Does that make sense? So we're going to talk about it. So how can Chiron, your deepest spiritual wound that you inherited lifetime over lifetime, become a gift? Well, I'm not going to tell you that answer because that is the quest. And I want you on that quest. And I want to be really honest about something. Wisdom does not come without experience. So you might not get that answer until your Chiron return, which is around 50. You know, if you were a Vietnam vet and you got your leg blown off and you saw all your buddies die, God forbid, and you were sitting around wondering as a 28-year-old, why the hell did this happen to me? Well, by 50, you will know why. Do I wish that on you? Heck no. Do I do I believe in the pain? No. I'm just here describing it to you and I'm describing the journey for you so you can step into the wisdom inside that wound, take care of it, extract it and share that wisdom with others. And you will find that that is one of the greatest meanings of your life. This wound That's why this video is so important for you to watch. I want to tell you how to watch this video in a few different ways, but I do want to say in the comments, please support one another on their spiritual journey, on their chironic spiritual journey. Would you? Would you answer comments and questions and lend love to the people that need love? And if you will leave your chironic wound story in the comments, it's not that I would be so grateful. But I think that's part of the healing process where you have a community and a tribe that is just so kind and so loving and so supportive. And that's one of the ways in which we start the forgiveness process and where we step into wisdom. And we share ideas with one another, when we share love with one another. I talked a lot about my own one of my own chironic wounds in the last video. I would love it if you found it safe enough to leave your wound in the comment. And then if you see a wound that touches you, comment on it. It's called love. It's called support. It's very vulnerable work. So I do ask that you leave very thoughtful and sensitive comments. Aspects are very important and they will tell you the story about your wound in more depth and detail. And they may even show who wounded you. The houses will show you in what arena, what playground, uh, or where the wound takes place in your life. For my advanced learners and listeners, what I would like for you to do is hopefully you have your gorgeous natal chart because I put Chiron on there. And um, if not, you can buy one in my shop for just $10.00. They're absolutely gorgeous. They're easy to read. And I want you to go and look at Chiron and see what planets it is in aspect to by 10 degrees on either side. And I want you to listen to the houses that I speak about, 1 through 12, of where those planets that are in aspect to Chiron are. So if you have an eighth house Chiron and it's in an opposition to some planet in the second house, I really want you to listen to, yes, the eighth house, because that's where your Chiron is, but also the second house. And if you have it in aspect to the 10th house, I want you to also listen to the 10th house. If you have Chiron in the seventh and it's opposing your ascendant, I want you to listen to what I say about Chiron in the first because it's making an aspect there. So it's touching both of those houses. It's interacting. It's on a boomerang, right? I really want you to look at your aspects and listen to this video in its entirety because I have a feeling your Chiron is in aspect to a lot of the houses in your chart. So for example, I have Chiron in the eighth house and it is an aspect to planets in my second house, my fourth house, my fifth house, and my 10th house. And so I should listen to 
all of those houses because Chiron is speaking to and wounding, right? And also creating great wisdom and it's creating my greatest spiritual gift in the themes of those houses. You guys got it? You got it? You got it? Tell me that you did. And so this is where and how I will try to heal and where I can give my healing gifts the most easily and how I will develop myself for other people. So these houses will show me where I can easily lay down my greatest gifts in life. These are the houses that will shine the most brightly in Chironic themes. So one more thing. First, before we dive into the houses, I want to share with you a healing app that has really, really helped me go deep within myself and nurture my mind, my heart, my body, and my soul. This app has been a healing grace in my life, and it actually helps me do my Chironic work. I'm not kidding. And it is so important in my life that I wanted to share it with you. I wonder if you already know about it. Oh my God. Oh my God. I have to show it to you. It is the Aura app. And oh my God, I love it. It is the Spotify for mindfulness and sleep, really good sleep. And after you use it for just one week, you're going to know why over 5 million people are using this app and why it won this Apple App Award. So let me show you how massively brilliant this is. Aura starts to learn you and what you like. So it develops kind of a personal relationship to you. And you can get access to thousands of sounds and sleep music and meditations and stories and life coaching and quotes and tons more. Oh my God. I'm going to show you my very favorite thing. This is the sound bowl music. It is the Sweet Dreams sound bath. It is so amazing. It is heavenly. This is my very favorite soundtrack, and it just calms me down. I do it during my red light therapy, and it opens up my third eye, and I am in a whole new universe. I've like left my body and transported to the cosmos. I'm not joking. It is the most cosmic healing music ever. I literally transcend the garbage and the toxicity of this real world sometimes. I just have to escape. And this is so phenomenal. I am super busy. I have no time, barely have time to take a shower. And that's why I love this app because they also have these beautiful stories and coaching sessions. And I listen to them while I'm on a walk with my little pup. I also have to tell you that I wake up to just a new beautiful quote every single morning. And so I send that quote to my mom and to my daughter. And I love that because it just starts off the day with inspiration. And I love the meditations based on my mood. Like if I want to do a healing session for my body or get rid of anxiety, they have a meditation for everything. And you guys, it's free. It's free for you. So I want you to try it and tell me if you love it. And tell me if it actually is helping you on your healing journey, like it helps me find inner tranquility, peace, and calm. So you get it for free, but you have to use my link, which is below, and hopefully we'll put one above. And when you click on that, you're going to get it totally for free for seven days. And then, and then if you love it and you find that you can't live without it, just like me, you get to have it for 25% off every month. It barely costs anything, but it is so worth it. And you'll even see there's live coaching sessions and there's live speakers that are so interesting and so inspiring. Sometimes you need a little extra, you know, from someone other than yourself. So I will put the link in the notes below and I will pin it as the top comment. So come try it out and let me know if you end up loving it. I want to know your thoughts. It is the Aura app. Okay, the meaning of Chiron. If you have Chiron in Aries or if you have Chiron in the first house, this is about your self identity and your healing wounds are really related to who you are in the world. This wound is also going to revolve around independence and power. Somehow our sense of individualized power, my sense of self, my power, my sovereignty has been taken away, abused, or diminished, or wounded in some capacity. So when we have a strong and healthy first house, we have a courageous power awareness. We think, 
I am powerful. I'm invincible. I can do anything. And with Chiron here, we can come to feel very insecure. We feel vulnerable. Our mere existence, our body feels really vulnerable. We feel maybe like we're shorter, smaller, tinier. We're the runt of the litter. We may not really be that, but inside we feel that. You could be six foot seven and just a brawn, right? And yet, you feel like you're powerless in some way. You also feel a little bit weakened, like your vote doesn't count because you have to take on the ideals and the wishes, the wishes of who you're supposed to be by what they're all telling you to be. You know, maybe you want to be a car mechanic, drop out of high school, get your GED, but your parents are like, "Uh uh-uh, you're a doctor or an engineer and you're going to go to the best school in the world and we're paying for it and you're doing it and you don't get to be a car mechanic, right? We've been taught with this placement not to reveal ourselves. So do you have Chiron in Aries or Chiron in the first house? Or does your Chiron make aspects, big aspects to the first house, opposition, square, trine, sextile? Trines and sextiles still are important aspects to Chiron. It just means the wound is going to find you in a different way. So we might have been taught that we in our culture, we in our environment, or we in our body is inadequate or not good enough. You might have been I don't know, fat shamed, or you might have been weakling shamed, you know, you might have been teased or made fun of by the way that you actually physically are in the real real world. And we will experience a lot of frustration, maybe even anger, and maybe even hatred at first. And the pain could come out in a way that's really angry, really thwarted anger and frustrated. And it could come out as either really rebellious or so sunken in inside of vulnerability that we don't have any ego will at all to put ourselves out there. And we might not be able, something about our assertion has gone wrong. We're either too aggressive, too forceful, too like an angry dog, right? Or we just roll over and totally surrender. So we don't have the proper assertion in life. So it's either too little or too much. So will you tell me if you have Chiron in the first or this aspect or Chiron in Aries or your Chiron's in aspect to the first house planets, how this assertion piece works out for you. But somehow our power, our sense of power has been wounded and it expresses itself insecurely. And so the closer Chiron is to the ascendant shows you how pronounced this wound is. So if it is really close within 10 degrees to the ascendant, we call that Chiron rising or Chiron on the ascendant. And it will show us that we probably even struggled maybe being born or we struggled in the the womb. So you you need to talk to your mom about, was I an easy baby to have? Or did you struggle? Was I an easy pregnancy? There might've been discontent even inside of the womb. You can read your natal chart for the nine months you were in the womb. It's really, really interesting. I might do a video on that. If you want one on that, let me know and I will consider it. Prenatal astrology. So I want to ask you, did you grow up in a hostile, aggressive environment where if you didn't obey, you got into big trouble? You know, these people, when they're living in their womb, they can just live to please other people and it can lead to really, really severe Chiron in the second house. Our wounds are related to material possessions, feeling broke, our resources, feeling like we have no resources to make it through life. My car doesn't work. I have no house. Just cold, hard cash. And our worth, our perceived value in the world. I am of no value. I am meaningless. I don't matter. And this is going to revolve deeply around your self-worth having been wounded and asking yourself, do you truly value me? Does my work value me? Do my parents value me? Do my best friends value me? And then you're going to go through life testing this truth. And you're going to test your hypothesis that you really don't have enough money and you really don't have the resources to do the things you want to do. You know, I'm a painter, but I can't afford the paints. Yeah, I want to be a hydroplaner, but of course I can't get a patron to buy my hydroplane. It's too expensive, so I'm not going to hydroplane. I want to be an astrologer, but, you know, I don't have enough time. Time is a resource. And so you're going to go around the world and you're going to test this hypothesis that you're not really worth it. You don't really have enough money. You don't really have the resources. You don't, you're not really of value. The, you know, I, I was talking to my brother, who's a brilliant guitarist, my younger brother, who's the Pisces, of course. And I was like, why don't you be a singer songwriter? Like God, he plays from the soul. He's like a magician poet when he plays and he just, he doesn't even, he's just playing chords. He's not even playing, you know, cover songs or anything. They're just mu- music from his soul. You know what he told me, Mayor, the last thing the world needs is another song. 
I said, but the world doesn't have your song. The world could use your song. It's like, eh, every song has already been sung. No, it hasn't. Not the song that hasn't been created yet. That song hasn't been sung, right? That's this placement. Somehow you just feel like your work will not be of value and that no matter what you do, it's really of no value. Think of how painful that is. Like what new thing can I teach you? Well, maybe I'm not teaching you one damn new concept, but maybe I'm speaking to you in a way that you can hear or it translates to your ear better. The way in which you receive the same old information feels new right? Again, you are the conduit. So the wounding is going to occur lifetime over lifetime over lifetime, proving to you that you're not worth it. You don't have enough money. You're broke. You need more money. You need more resources than what you have. And this is how you will rewound yourself. So somehow, some way, some way, your sense of worth in the world started to feel invalid. It started to feel void. You started to feel worthless. We also learned at a very young age that we don't have enough. We don't have enough. We don't have enough self-esteem. We don't have enough money. We don't have enough resources. We can't function as well as other people can function. Look what they got. They got boats and planes over there, incredible ski equipment, and they got a pool and and they got a, they got a Jaguar, right? I ride a moped. They got a Jaguar. We start filling ourselves up um, in ways to feel better, oftentimes with food or with ways in which we can escape the pain of not having enough. This is a real keeping up with the Joneses. And for all my international watchers, do you know what I mean by that? It means your next door neighbor has all these toys, this beautiful house, and you don't. And so you want to look like you do, right? And so you want to keep up with the Joneses. You want to keep up with the neighbors. This is the subject matter. I don't know exactly how it played out in your life, but I'm just giving you the arena. So money has a wound attached to it. So you might've had too much. Have you seen that before? Too much can ruin a soul or you might've had too little. You might've been born into a family that valued or had to value, God bless them. Maybe they had to work three jobs, money over time with you. You could become angry or resentful about the role in which money played out in your world. Maybe there wasn't enough money. Maybe you went to bed hungry. Maybe there was too much. Maybe you got left out of the will. Maybe you didn't get any of the money. And so what can happen with this placement when you have Chiron interacting with the second house or in Taurus, you can overattach to money, to sex, to food, to toys, material, the material world. I have a, a friend who has this giant aspect. Okay, Chiron in the third house. With this placement, you're going to be working on healing wounds related to your voice, communication, your mind, learning, reading, writing, speaking, thinking, and also your siblings. So these people give a lot of energy to their thought process and their communication because this is where they feel vulnerable. And they do actually have an incredible brilliance about them and they can become even phenomenal writers, communicators, researchers. Your chironic journey, so the wound and the healing and the wisdom is going to come through Mercury. Mercury is extraordinarily important in your chart because it is how you will be wounded and how you will be a healing gift to others. We might find that it's really hard to communicate our ideas and we might have been quieted or shut down or told to be, you know, be quiet, shut up when we were younger. And we may not have the ability to put our deeper feelings into words. And so our feelings don't get expressed very easily. We might feel disconnected and we might feel like we don't even know what it is we truly feel. Or if we do, we can't express them. You might have also been raised in an environment where you didn't talk about things like, nope, nope, we don't talk about that. Nope. I know, you know, what was your mom's greatest fear? I don't know. My mom would never even tell me something like that. My parents would never be vulnerable to me, right? Something like that. You might feel like the important things never got discussed and you might feel lost in your own vocabulary or your own ability to to even reveal yourself, your, your deeper thoughts, your profound thoughts. You might communicate in very basic or simple ways that feels kind of superficial or on the surface when you know there's so much more inside there. This could be a defense mechanism. This could be just what you learned. And you might be extraordinarily intelligent, but nobody knows it or nobody sees it. You might be extraordinarily bright or brilliant, but nobody fostered it or they didn't foster it in a way that you wanted it, wanted them to. Maybe you couldn't afford a higher education. Maybe you couldn't even afford an education. Maybe you had to study something you didn't even want to study. Revealing our truths in a very personal way becomes thwarted, disjointed, 
fractured, severed. There's an inability. Again, there's a vacancy and a void around that. Oftentimes these people can have a sibling who is wounded and sucks up all of the oxygen and the family is focused to serve that sibling or pay attention or care for that sibling. And so this person learns to step aside to allow that suffering sibling the time, the care and the the attention that they need. And you may even feel like there's a struggle e- even to express or talk about yourself. Maybe nobody ever asks you any questions. Are you the person who you show up at the dinner party and the person talks incessantly about themselves and they never asked you one damn thing about yourself? Yeah, they never asked you one damn thing. It's like, and then they tell you, oh my God, I had the best time of my life. You are the best friend. It was so wonderful. And you're like, You don't know one damn thing about me. You don't even know my last name. You don't even know anything about me because all you did was talk about yourself. That's this chironic wound, right? Where it's like, why is nobody inquisitive about me? Am I not interesting? Am I not fascinating? What's wrong with me talk. Why can't I hold court for a night? There could be also sort of a competitiveness for talk time and it's never your turn. It's like the speaker stage. Okay. You know, person A go, person B go, you're person C. Person D, what do you think? What about person E? You're like, hello. I had an opinion. I wanted to talk. I wanted to tell you what I thought about global warming and if it's true or not true. I had opinions. (laughs) Don't answer that question, by the way. It's just an example. It's like, I have a big opinion. Why wasn't I asked, right? You can also feel a little bit of that competition with your siblings. You might have a sibling that put you down, bullied you, hurt you, stole the shining light, was the perfect child, you know, was crap. Chiron in the fourth house. This is going to be wounds around where you come from, maybe not knowing where you come from, maybe you're adopted, your home, your family, maybe your childhood, maybe feeling emotionally insecure, maybe feeling displaced. It can take on many, many forms. It can be inheriting your mother's wound. It can be a wound around mother. It can be an emotional wound that was inherited from the mother's lineage, our families, our ancestors. This could be an ancestral wound. I don't know. Maybe you found out that your ancestors were bad guys. That's awful. And so you can develop an insecurity around a sense of, I don't really fit. I don't really belong. These are really deep wounds. And the closer it is to the IC, the IC is the thick line. I, I made, I designed the gorgeous natal charts. It's that thick line between the third and the fourth house. And I want you guys to watch the video called Understanding Cusps in the natal chart. And I show you all the houses and all the house cusps. But if it's close to the closer it is to that IC, the deeper this wound is. So that angle is really, really, really tender. That's a major artery into the heart of your contract. And so if it's in the middle of the house, it's still prominent. It's still the theme. But if it's on that IC, and I count within 10 degrees, but let's say it's on the IC or it's two degrees away from the IC, this wound is very, very tender. And so these people oftentimes feel a need to be separate. They isolate and they also feel the separateness of their families. They feel their families compartmentalized. Um, They don't feel fully integrated sometimes. They feel a deep need to heal by being alone. Now, remember, this is also how you will heal. So when I was talking about the third house, you're going to heal the voice that you don't use by using the voice that you don't use. Now we can never fully heal the wound, but you can care for it. So these people usually have a feeling of, or a wounding, a challenge around sacrificing deeply their own wants, their own needs in order to belong to the family or the group or another person to create the bond. So whoever they want to bond with, they have to sacrifice their own wants, their own desires, even their own feelings and their own emotions to have that bond. Now that bond could be with mom, that bond could be with dad, that bond could be with a divorced family. I have to do it this way at dad's and this way at mom's. It could be a friendship circle. It could be anybody who you want to bond with. You feel like in order to belong, I have to pay the price of admission, which means I don't get to put my own feelings and wants and desires and needs out there. And if I do, I'll be rejected. It is the group or the bond that becomes so important to them. If they don't create that bond, they literally feel exiled from their 
own life, from their own sustenance, from that bond which gives them their identity. And if they get exiled, they die. And they can feel exiled from those whom they love that do not love them in return. So rejection is the name of the game when you got Chiron in the fourth, and it is painful. Chiron hurts where, wherever it's at, but look to the to the ruler. So if you have Chiron in Cancer or you have Chiron in the fourth or you have Chiron, you know, in aspect to the fourth house. So let's say you have it in the 10th and you have an opposition here. Painful, painful, painful. They give up on their own needs to please another person. And it's not just like the seventh house to just to be in relationship, but in order to belong to another person. So it's deeper than the seventh house because it's like, I want to belong to you and I want you to belong to me in a relationship that has a bond like this and where it is meshed together. And so they really want this other person to take care of their emotional needs only to find out. Chiron in the fifth is going to tell you a story around the wounds to your inner child, the suppression of your passions, of your life force energy, of your creativity, and everything in your world that brought you joy and pleasure. So you were not free to express yourself with bold authenticity with your creativity with your your life force energy your very personality maybe even your dignity um your identity in some way your creative and and very powerful unique identity was shunned put down suppressed oppressed taken away stolen your identity could have been stolen even this created a coping mechanism around being highly self-conscious and probably even filled yourself with I'm not good enough isms and a lot of self-criticism and eventually not even being able to live authentically, authentically you. It's a little bit like cancer, except it's more in general and it's less about a bond with a person, an emotional bond. And it's a little bit more about your radiance and who shut that light down? Who turned your light off? How did your confidence get stolen? What event, what happened around stealing that joy and replacing it with deep insecurities? The insecurity with Chiron and the fifth is covered up. There's a mask of courage, but deep down, there is a feeling of vulnerability, feeling vulnerable and the fear isn't I'm vulnerable. The fear is you will see that I am insecure. You will see my insecurity. You will see my vulnerability. It's not a fear around being vulnerable. It's a fear around that vulnerability and that insecurity and that fakeness that I, I have to wear to survive uh, being revealed, being called out. This placement often shows up where it's even too vulnerable to express my creativity. So I just become cookie cutter. I become vapid, vacant, empty, a copycat, and I start to plagiarize my life. You also can experience having a great wound with this placement around your own children, your own children leaving you, going to the ex-wife or the ex-husband, picking their friends over you, being mean to you, being disrespectful, not appreciating you, having no gratitude, or them being wounded or even sadly taken from you in some horrible way, in a way that you can't heal. So somehow there could be a wound to your child, which in turn devastates you. Now, if you have Chiron in the fifth, I don't want you to live in a state of paranoia that there's going to be a wound to your child because most often it is about your own life force energy. It is about your own creative expression. And it is about that little kid inside of you that had to go away, had to grow up, had to become mature, had to get wise, you know, had to get cynical in order to survive its own life. And in order to care for this wound, you are going to be presented with opportunities to flourish creatively and to get confident if you can show off your magnetic, radiant talents. What are you talented at? Put that into the world. And when you have Chiron here, it's very painful to do so. It's like, I, I don't, you know, mom, I made this beautiful painting. Oh, great. Let's hang it in the living room. No, 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 no. Or, you know, you go and you take pictures of your child and they're so gorgeous, but they won't let you post them. 
right? I don't want to show, I don't want to show myself. In order to nurture this wound and care for this wound, you have to put yourself out there into the light in which your soul desires. That's how you heal. Now, again, this is the wound that you cannot heal, but it is a healing journey. Living creatively is the panacea for this wound. So I want you to date creatively. Find your dates, go on creative dates. Date creatively. Plant your garden creatively. Decorate your house creatively. Do creative therapy. Do art therapy. Do creative outlets. Dance, sing, perform, crochet. I don't care. It doesn't matter. Figure something out to be creative. This is the house of joy. And so you have to find in a massive... Okay, Chiron in the sixth house, you're going to be receiving lessons that have something to do with your daily routine, with your work service in the world, with your small animals, with your mentorships, your mentors in this world, and becoming a mentor yourself. I also want to say around being perfect, huge lessons, and around mastering your craft in this lifetime. Now, don't forget, if you want to receive my extended content and where I go deep into sort of the nurturing care and the remedies for each one of these signs, you can just join and become a member and you can receive all of my extended material. And Chiron is so fascinating and so interesting because it, it, it is here to become the greatest spiritual gift you have to give to the world. And it is wanting to have mastery in it. I also want to say that Chiron in the sixth can bring health, well-being, wellness, preventative care, your aches, your pains to the forefront. Chiron in the sixth is pretty deep. If you have this by transit, if you have your ruler here, Chiron's ruler here, or if you have aspects, if your Chiron makes aspects to different planets in the sixth house, it gets really, really deep. So let's talk about just your daily routine. This is the place that you go to on a daily basis. For me, this is the gym. This is the grocery store. This is the dog park. This is my neighborhood. This is right here, my office. This is like where I spend more time than any thing. Probably my bedroom in here and the kitchen. <laughs> your home office, your school, your training field, your small pets. This is the place of the sixth house. I'm going to say what a lot of people know, but neglect to say out loud. This is also the other house of your mind. This is the other house of your mind. This is Mercury's other house. So remember that very few people Remember to say that. So we can have a lot of hurts and pains and wounds and challenges around our mind, around the way we communicate and the way that we think, talk, communicate, write, or even socialize. There is a socialization about this house. This could be coworkers, but um, do you disassociate socially? That can be a chironic wound in the sixth house. It's also if you struggle with feeling good enough to become somebody's mentor or teacher, do you feel like you could be a guide in the field in which you work in or no. And it's also where we can be hurt by our mentors. Were you crushed? You know, were you in band and your band teacher just crushed you around not performing well enough? I mean, I had mentors that were absolutely criminally cruel to me, took advantage of me, used me. And still I have mentors that are not very nice to me. They are, I don't know, riddled with jealousies and all kinds of crazy things where they really are not a great mentor. And I'm just sort of shell-shocked by it. I'm like, you're supposed to be the example, right? But this can become very, very debilitating if you have Chiron here, like the disappointment around your mentorship providing terrible advice or you maybe not knowing that you were in a cult, right? Because you believed your mentor, your cult leader so deeply that you just were drinking the Kool-Aid and following them off the cliff, right? This is also a wound where you can truly feel like it doesn't matter what you do. It could bring me to tears telling you this. I am not good enough. 
I will never live up to. I will never measure up. I could have my BA, my MA, and my PhD, and I still feel so inadequate. This is the house that makes you feel really small. And so if you if you feel chronic disappointment or you are chronically disappointed or you are the chronic disappointment to others, or you just feel like you are never chosen for the team, you are never picked, you're last to be chosen, you're last to get the award, the merit, the scholarship, you're last to you know get the raise or the promotion, you are in the lowest level of the caste system. Now, for some reason, I'm a big fat secret on YouTube, and I don't know why. Almost every day I get a comment, Meredith, why do people not know about you? Meredith, people need to know about your channel. I'm like, I know. The only way people can know about this work and join this beautiful community and understand that there is such deeper astrology to be learned and to be known and to be taught and to be shared is if you share the channel. So would you share this video with people and ask them to like and subscribe and help me get to 100,000 subscribers. YouTube only lets you grow at a certain rate. I mean, they will only push my video out 20% each month and whoever gets it, gets it. If you resonate with me, I would be so grateful if you would join the channel as a super supporter, of course, but also if you would like, comment, and share my channel with others and encourage people to subscribe. Also, I kind of want to tell you that one of the very best ways you can truly understand your Chiron is to get a reading. You can jump on my calendar and get a reading if you like, but I have kind of a long wait list. So I really recommend you go to Soul Navigation and go take a look at my readers. I've got two of them, Connie Joe and Stacy. They are amazing. And you can save a little time and save a little bit of money and jump on their calendars and get your own chironic reading. It is absolutely liberating when you truly understand this spiritual karmic contract in your own chart. So I want you to know that I did do all 12 houses. The video was longer than three hours. It was like three hours and 40 minutes. Ah! So my members are going to have all that extended content. And if you want that, you can join and become a super supporter for just $2.99 or a superstar super supporter for just $19.99. There's all different kinds of benefits and perks and the community is just so lovely. So come join and be a member and get the long version because there's tons of juicy tidbits and there is just so much juicy fruit in Chiron. And I go deep into what do you need to start your healing journey? So this work is very profound. It's very deep. It's very rich. And that's why it took so much time. I am not going to load all 12 videos today. I'm just going to load this in segments that are palatable, that won't absolutely, utterly exhaust you with the deep. I just adore you. Thank you for being a member. Thank you for being here. I can't wait to meet you one day, someday on our astrological journey. Hopefully our stars will cross. And I just wish you the very, very best. From my home in Seattle to wherever you're at in the world, my heart goes out to you. Take good care.